Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. All right, so now we're going to start getting into some really um, uh, uh, key content that you're going to see more and more on exams. You're going to be able to apply to the patients that you come in contact with. Now, not that what we've spoken about before isn't uh, applicable to what you do in the field, right? But a lot of it really isn't your day-to-day -day stuff. It's good to know this information because of what you use in the field, what you see on exams, how you document all that, right? But I think you're going to find the content coming up in these quick study episodes are going to be much more relevant and you're going to find yourselves using them and even taking them and kind of implementing them along with previous episodes to really start make sense of things, okay? So, of course, I always like to say why this is important. And, of course, it's great for exam preparation, right? And it's all great for things like documentation. And I mentioned before, your clinical impression, what you think is going on with your patient, um, and how you're going to treat or transport them, right? Depending on where you transport patients. All this stuff ties in. So it's not just about getting some key content and saying, okay, I need to know that for the exam. It's time to move on. No, this is for everything that you're doing in the field, okay? I gear it more towards exam prep because I know a lot of people come to the site and come to uh, my resources for exam preparation, okay? But there is a lot more involved uh, than just exam prep. But this is why I always say, whatever you see during these episodes, since they are short, if you find something that you don't understand or something that is not clicking for you, okay, go open that textbook, open that review guide, open that app, okay, and look into it more. And the same goes, I'm going to just go on a little tangent here, the same goes for when you do practice exams. Don't just take a practice exam whether it's something that I have on my site, emsseo.com, EMS or another uh, website, or another app, or whatever the case may be, right? It doesn't matter what exam prep you use. Most of them are, are very good. They cover what you need to be covered. They help you get into that exam mode. But don't use the practice exam solely to say, okay, I've passed every practice exam. I'm ready for the test, okay? Don't use it that way. Use it as a study resource. Okay, um, what I mean by that is, let's say you take an exam, you start getting questions wrong. If you find a question you have wrong, that you don't know why you got it wrong, you say, well, why did I get that wrong? I'm not quite sure. Okay, if you don't look at the question, then the answer go, oh, yeah, okay, that's why they're right. I, sh I should have got that. All right. I'm talking about you looking at a question, you do you answer the question, you have no clue why you answered it that way. You have no clue why the correct answer is what it is, Right. Don't just take it at face value with that and say, okay, I'll memorize that for next time. No, that's not going to help you. It's not going to help the patients you're taking care of. It's not going to help the documentation that you make. It's not going to help your presentation to doctors and nurses, right? Go open up that textbook. Open up that review guide. Look for it at a blog, online, at EMS websites, wherever the case may be. Use something like my members-only site, TurboMedic, right? Use that to research why you got those, those questions wrong. By researching it, you're going to find yourself understanding the content much, much more and you'd be much more prepared to answer that question and similar questions based around that topic much more efficiently and you're going to get them right, okay? And so instead of giving away that 2.5, 5 points, whatever the case is, you'll be guaranteed to get those points on your exam. All right, enough going off on a tangent. I want to get into today's... Uh, episode and we're talking about fluid balance and electrolytes and of course as always guys this is a quick overview because you can take any subsection of this and break it down into an hour two hour three hour lectures okay so we but I want to give you this key content to help you with your exams now I know a lot of you hear my little birdie in the background that is Louie Louie is a parrot let and he likes to chirp and go crazy when he hears my voice so I apologize for him making a racket in the background and uh, I hope you can kind of filter him out when you listen to, to my voice so all right let's get into this all right some numbers that are good to recall when we talk about fluid balance and electrolytes is that water is 50 to 60 percent of total body weight your intracellular fluid is about 45 percent 
your extracellular fluid is about 15%, and then your plasma, your intravascular uh, fluid is about 10.5%, 10%. Okay? Now, this includes, of, and also we have your interstitial fluid, okay, which is 4.5%. All right, so that makes up uh, out, of the, out, of, out of that, you know, your, your total body weight. This is what the breakdown ends up being. Okay, these are important numbers to remember because you might see on exams what is the percentage of water in the body, what is the percentage of of plasma or intracellular fluid, things like that. Okay, so keep that in mind. These are good numbers to, to memorize, even if the question you see and the answer you see aren't exact. Right. It's not going to say 40%, 40%, 42%, 40, 45%, 40, no, it's going to say things like 30%, 25%, 45%, 75%, right? That's usually the way they're going to give you the questions. It's not going to be so close where you can argue, okay, well, one textbook says 45% is intracellular fluid. Another textbook says it's 47%. You, they're not going to do that to you, okay? So keep these round numbers in your head of what you're going to be looking for, okay? Now, homeostasis, what is this? Well, it's the it's your 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 um means what the fluid you're intaking must equal the output of the fluid that you're taking. The electrolytes and the fluids have to be equal. Okay, so how does that regulate it? Well, the pituitary gland regulates it. Has an antidiuretic hormone. The kidneys is something that 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 you get involved with it, where they take water back in. Okay, that's one method of, of regulation. Okay, another one is by thirst. You get thirsty, you're going to drink. Okay, and then back to the kidneys. That's, that's the third way that we're going to regulate homeostasis is by the kidneys, by doing things like it says on number one, taking water back in, right? So your pituitary gland is going to trigger that, that hormone, and then the kidneys are going to come into to place with that. All right? Now, electrolyte, just real quick. Your cations, which are positive, all right, are things like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. Your anions, which are the negative electrolytes, are chloride, bicarbonate, and phosphate. Now, we can go into this, again, much, much deeper when we talk about cations and anions and how they relate to each other and what, what does what, okay? And we'll get a little bit into that in, in future episodes, but for right now, I'm just listing them for you. And keep in mind, this is the stuff you want to look at. When you, when you see a question, what are the cations? So some examples, and you'll see sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. All right? All right, acid-base balance. This is something that people struggle with. Okay, I'm going to try to keep this as clear and, and, and non-confusing as I can here. All right, but hydrogen, pretty much, this is an acid. So your pH, which is the hydrogen ion concentration... The balance of acid that's produced and acid that's eliminated, all right, and what ends up happening is the higher amount of hydrogen, the lower is the pH. And then the lower amount of hydrogen, the higher your pH is going to be. So keep that in mind, your, your hydrogen ions, okay, because these are the things that you're going to be, be kind of asked to recall and to consider when you talk about low pH and high pH. We'll get into that a little bit later when we start talking about alkalosis and acidosis and respiratory versus metabolic. All right, we'll get into that in the next video. But for right now, to try to kind of build the baseline for you on, on the hydrogen and, and the, how it's an acid and what, how it regulates uh, that balance, okay, that pH balance. Now, I made this a separate slide because I want you, you will see this on a test. You're not going to be documenting this on your, on your charts. You're not going to be seeing this on, you know, uh, uh, on, your, on your EPCR. I'm not going to ask you what the patient's uh, blood pH is, right? But you will see on an exam, and you want to know that normal blood pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Now, how do we maintain pH? Now, there's three systems that we maintain it with. Mainly we have our, our, our buffers, which are those chemical sponges, right? And we're talking about bicarbonate, which is your uh, H, which is H, HC, I'm not gonna say the, the, the chemical, I'm sort of confusing you, but you get your bicarbonate, your, carbon, your carbonic acid, and um, this, this is the, the, your buffers, okay? The first buffer that we're talking about. Your first way you're gonna maintain the pH, one of the, the first system, okay? And 
this works better than bicarbonate when this gets gets kicked in when you talk about acidosis. The second way is through your lungs, and this regulates your CO2 and your H your H2 and CO3 in the body. Okay, so your lungs will either speed up your, your respiratory rate, slow down your respiratory rate in order to get that regulation and get that pH regulated. Okay, and finally, which is the last one, which is the kidney. That we talk about the kidneys before, how they play a role in pH and, and your hydrogen balances, right? So th this is sort of um, kind of later on, all right, um, and it takes a little bit longer, okay, but we're talking about how, how it's getting rid of your hydrogen, getting rid of your H HCO3, and, and, and this is all indicated, again, by the pH of the blood. That's going to trigger your kidneys into kicking into action and dealing with that acidosis, dealing with that alkalosis, okay, but again, Kidneys take a little bit longer. So you're going to see things like lungs working first, okay, and things like the buffer, the, the bicarbonate buffers working first before you start seeing any, you know, the kidneys, especially by the time we get there when we get called, okay? So it depends upon when the patient calls, what, what stage they're in, whether you're going to be seeing things like kidneys, you know, working on this, okay? All right, so I don't want to get too into it. I'm trying to keep this section a little shorter because... You know, these can get a little confusing, you know, and knowing between knowing the differences between acidosis and alkalosis. So I don't want to get too deep into it. So we're going to stop here on fluid and electrolytes. We're going to get back into it next time. And we're going to talk about uh, specifically respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. Okay, we'll get into that next time. Um, and kind of hopefully this next the next episode will start tying in what we talked about today and how it's, how to regulate things, okay, especially when we talk about respiratory, when we're breathing too low, breathing too high, okay, too much CO2, too little CO2, we're going to get into that in the next episode, okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's episode, I know this stuff can start to get a little overwhelming, can start to get confusing, but again, I encourage you, if you don't understand things that I'm speaking about in this episode, I'm trying to talk fast, trying to get the information out that fast to give you these key elements, if you're not getting it, okay, go ahead open up that textbook, all right, and do a little research, and I think you'll find you yourself personally will retain it much, much better if you go look it up and read about it than looking at me, you know, regurgitating to you on a video. You've already heard your instructors talk to, talk about it. You might have seen it before on a YouTube video or maybe an, another instructor might have talked about it, right? So let's give up the video. Let's give up the shortcuts. Let's crack open that book and really understand the content so that when you look at that exam and you're documenting and you're talking about, about this type of stuff to nurses and doctors and what you think is going on with the patient, you can all touch better and you'll be much, much more well-versed at it, okay? So that's it again. I want to, of course, point out the quick study guide. Great content here, guys. Everything we talked about in these episodes is in this quick study guide, okay? So go check it out. Click here for details. Uh, see what this is all about. Again, this is pretty much your 600, 700 page textbook, kind of narrowed down to a nice 100 somewhat page uh, quick study guide. I've used this myself. This is a go-to resource, guys, studying for an exam. Okay, trust me when I tell you this. All right, any questions, comments, uh, suggestions for Monday Minutes, please send them to me. My, con my information and contact email is contact at emsofficehours.com. I'd love to hear what you think about these and, and uh, uh, what your suggestions are for future Monday Minutes. Uh, and, of course, I encourage you to leave a comment below in the, in the, the comments section. Share this on Twitter. Like it on Facebook. Share it on Facebook. Get the word if you find these useful. Guy, I'm sure if you find it even a minuscule useful, there are other EMS providers, other paramedic students out there and researching candidates who might also find this content useful. All right, that's it for me, guys. As always, my name is Jim Hoffman. Stay safe. <laughs>